on uh, the the love bug and um, bed knobs and broomsticks. And when they were starting up ILM, he came in and and looked at Raiders of the Lost Ark scene and and he said the guy didn't know how to do the matte painting, so he said here's my gift to you. I will do this and you can take credit for it. So that's that's the matte painting that. Um, who was the guy who did it? Awesome. His name is. Uh, his last name is Maley. I know his son Andrew is a friend of mine. I can't remember his first name, but um, I'll I'll look it up. No um, that I was, was just... a, that was a terrific ending for that film. So unexpected. Yeah, that was nice. If you don't have if you have access to the mouse, if you have Disney Plus, there's a show there called um, Light and Magic, which is a six part documentary on the making of on how ILM started and became ILM. Um, uh, they were all written and directed by Lawrence Kasdan, who's a good friend of Lucas's. And it's an amazing, I think it is Alan Mealy, yes. It's an amazing um, uh, documentary. Really, really fun. I was just so excited to see how they did all these special effects in these movies. Cool. Um, I love that. Here's a, um, here's a rendering of Jupiter as a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the red spot, man? <laughs> that's the the red storm is right in here that's pastrami i think <clears throat> it's just it's just beautifully done um a little bit of, a little bit of wall art cave wall art yeah anyway i was just going through uh nostalgically going through some old uh images um this is an artist named hodas who does uh dystopian future landscapes of familiar things often cartoon characters like uh bender um and then my dad painted this hmm. it hangs it hangs in the room that i'm in so i yes. shot it put it as my background <clears throat> and then of course buy blue blue is better <clears throat> um and we are here, we are dearly beloved, we are collected here for our weekly Thursday ritual OGM call. Um, today is a topic call and Pete hath thrown down a spiked leather glove. <laughs> which has one of those strips they stop cars with, you know, like <laughs> which, which, which has buckskin on one side so that it's soft and smooth and then like spikes on the other because all right, let's go do something. Well, that's Very like Pete. <laughs> um, which I really like and appreciate. So um, I, I'm thinking, Pete, do you want to riff on it for a moment? Uh, uh, sure, I would love to. Start there, and then we can sort of dig in. And I think it, this will be an interesting journey. Um, so the discussion started, I, I posted uh, this morning on the OGM list. And so we've had a couple posts already in the thread. Um, uh, and uh, there's also a, a website that collects the discussion so far. Uh, and so if you go to the homepage of that website, uh, you'll see my proposal. It's the same proposal that got posted to the uh, mailing list. I, I didn't have in mind creating a website for it, but it was easy and fun and practical and useful, I think. So um, the idea is uh, I, the concept or the conceit kind of is uh, we, we often, we often, you know, Jay says, okay, this is a topic call. What are we going to talk about? And um, we haven't yet gotten good at dis discussing the topic before we get to the call. So most of the topic calls are, let's pick a topic. Um, uh, another thing that we do is we have a number of favorite topics that we talk about, but we we have kind of a goldfish memory of them. We don't, you know, we don't have in, them written down anywhere, even though we've talked at length about many of these topics, um, none of it's written down. So we're continually kind of like regenerating the first part of the discussion. Mm. And I feel like we never get to the middle or, you know, um, expansive parts of the discussion because of that. So um, I, I, the metaphor I had in my mind was uh, some thick book. Um, I wanted to call it a monograph because it's kind of about one thing, but a monograph is usually a single author. So it turns out that the, the name is actually an edited volume. 
an edited volume has uh, like an editor, maybe two, uh, and a bunch of authors who write chapters in it. So I was thinking, wouldn't it be cool if we had chapters uh, for uh, climate change chapters, you know, uh, different chapters, climate change, uh, the rise of artificial intelligence, the growing inequality gap, the erosion of democracy, the war in Ukraine. Um, uh, Doug, Doug said, uh, Doug C uh, said that, you know, great idea, love it. Um, uh, wouldn't it be cool if we had scenarios and we could include scenarios in the chapter, chapter. So for climate change, you could have the scenario of, hey, let's do nothing and see what happens. Or, hey, let's have a high tech solution and see what happens. Or, hey, let's uh, have a, an all in one kind of everything uh, uh, scenario. And, and what would that look like? And I think th those would be great additions to the chapters. Um, Doug also expressed a little concern. Uh, so, you know, while I like the idea of topics, I, I worry that we might have, have some uh, hidden bias or, or we might miss parts of it. Um, and where, where might we have uh, the, the mega topics like governance um, and uh, uh, improving the earth, uh, maintaining the earth? Um, so I, I think those those are are good um, uh, good chapters as well. So I don't think that the chapters have to be at the level of just climate change or just the war in Ukraine. Maybe there's also mega chapters about governance. Um, uh, and then as I've been talking about uh, the the idea, it's also pretty clear in my my head and, and carried over from the the idea that the conceit of this is an edited volume. Um, there's a chapter author or chapter authors, I would hope, um, you know, somebody maintaining the chapter on soil health and somebody maintaining the chapter on the war in Ukraine. Um, somebody's, I, I would hope. Uh, uh, because they're subject matter experts or because they're passionate about the, the topic but don't know a lot and want to learn from the subject matter experts um, or maybe they're kind of a floater. They, they like to be part of the author, authorial team for a number of chapters and kind of get the, the tone and the, you know, the voice right um, for the whole, uh, the whole website. Um, uh, so chapter authors are kind of the, 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 main people working on it. Uh, there might be an editorial board, which makes the um, editorial team uh, editorial board, um, which kind of is responsible for um, uh, making sure that we're doing a good job of partitioning topics um, and making sure that there's kind of an overall voice. Um, and then there's a publisher. Um, maybe it's Jerry, uh, maybe it's OGM. Um, an anonymously kind of, or, or whatever that would be, uh, collectively. Uh, maybe it's Jerry and OGM. Um, uh, maybe it's somebody else. I don't know. Um, so uh, the, the general idea, uh, Doug actually also raised another great thing. So how would we weave discussion in there? And because I, I really want us to have a, a kind of a written record of what we talk about and kind of a catalog of topics that we can talk about. Um, I think uh, at least to start, it would overload the whole, the whole structure to try to weave discussion into that. And so my idea is to start with kind of a simple catalog of, you know, here's the stuff that we like to talk about and here's what we've talked about about those topics. And here's how kind of we think about the world and making it a better place. Um, so discussion, I, I would propose, should stick where we do discussion right now, um, even though I think we do it pretty poorly. Uh, we discuss things in the OGM list, we discuss things here on calls, we discuss things uh, sometimes in Mattermost, and I would just continue that. Um, someday, if we got really good at, um, at kind of managing an information construct like the OGM topic thing, which has got a fair amount of management overhead to it, publisher or publishers, editor or editors, hopefully editorial team, editorial board and authors. I'm talking, so right there, I'm talking like this is a six or 10 person project. It's not, um, you know, Pete and Jerry, or it's not Jerry, or it's not, you know, any one of us. It's a, it's a bigger project. Um, uh, 
so if we got really good at that and we had uh, you know another six or 12 people who could manage uh, discussion space then we could maybe come back to something like we used to have the OGM forum uh, which was built in discourse um, discourse was the OGM forum was actually a really successful experiment um, and it kind of like expanded and evaporated because we we didn't grow the management team the the overhead team that could take care of the space and us having our discussions. Having said that, so it, it, it's uh, defunct right now. It's, it's actually, uh, the, the archive is still on the web, live and not live, pickled, and people can go read the whole thing. Uh, you can't contribute to it anymore because it's not software, it's just static pages now. Um, the, the forum was actually beautifully successful as an attempt at getting discussion going. Um, and it just faltered on managing the discussion, uh, the meta stuff, the overhead stuff. So we could certainly come back to that if if we had the um, the resource the resourcing for it. Um, uh, of course, I I imagine a technical publishing team. Um, I I would be happy to lead it. Um, and if it were me leading it, uh, we'd be having the authors write in whatever the tool they like, um, typewriters or Microsoft Word or Google Docs or Obsidian, doesn't matter, don't care. Happy to take whatever, wherever, handwriting would be fine. Um, uh, so authors write in whatever tools they, they feel comfortable with. And then the technical publishing team uh, turns that into a massive wiki. And then the massive wiki uh, is partly a publishing uh, engine. So it comes out on the web. Um, future versions of massive wiki will also come out in eBooks and paper books if you really want it, or PDFs. Uh, so that's the, the general idea. Um, I, I think it would help us a lot to feel like we're actually actually accomplishing something kind of rather than just grinding over the same spots over and over. Um, so I, I would be excited if more people were involved. Thanks. Um, Pete, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Friend has his hand up. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Pete, I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Uh, I think you're onto something and you framed it really well. Um, uh, I was I was wondering about the, the publishing options and you covered that toward the end there. Uh, I wonder about um, who's in, what are the boundary conditions for participation at different levels and how that gets figured out. Because uh, something like this, needs a semi-permeable membrane like living systems have. Um, can't do no membrane, can't do wall, got to do semi-permeable and the valving conditions are going to be really important. Um, if people aren't aware of it, uh, World Changing was a terrific example of an edited volume done about, gosh, 10 or 15 years ago by Alex Steffen and a team of brilliance. Um, and uh, might be, and if you're not familiar with it, it's an interesting model to look at. And I could introduce you to Alex and how that was done back in the day of uh, pre-web. Um, I mean, web was there, but the book wasn't done in web. Um, uh, on discussion, I understand why you want to have the discussion in a separate place, but I think about a reader's experience to be able to, to, to read a chunk of writing and then see discussion or participate in discussion on that right there uh, seems to be real value. So maybe that comes later in the time sequence maybe there's a way of bringing stuff in from a matter most or otherwise other other discussion space into this in a curated process uh, but i you know for my listening i'd want to have these these chapters or whatever we're going to call them be live and interactive so there's a challenge of how to do that um, you mentioned OGM forum, the pickled thing. I don't know about it. What is it? How is it? Well, well how is it different than Mattermost, and why did it pickle? Uh, Pete, you're muted. Yeah. Uh, if, if I may, real quick, uh, it's forum.openglobalmind.com. Uh, it was discourse software, mm -hmm. um, uh, and the reason it's pickled is because we we we. Um, Earlier times, uh, we were less uh, sophisticated about our knowledge about um, facilitating conversations. I think Pete is too kind. Um, uh, if I if I will be if I will be frank here, and I think I think Pete would agree, 
Um, I didn't participate on the discourse forum really at all. I couldn't get over there. It was too much text for me to like, like sort of sink into. And I'm relatively sure that my non-participation over there, despite several other people, Rob O'Keefe was in there trying to help us like herd cats and figure out what to do. There was, there was a lot of interest and a lot of activity. Um, but I think my not being over there built the gap between what was happening there. And I, I would not necessarily have deprecated it. I would have sort of enjoyed it uh, continuing and going on, but uh, but Pete said, no, let's 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 uh, let's euthanize it. Uh, so he archived it. He basically uh, put it in carbonite and mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know put it up, put it on the web exactly. <clears throat> I can put a, a finer point on it. Um, uh, <laughs> um, since Jerry, you're throwing yourself on on uh, somebody's sword. I'm not sure who. Um, I, I can. I think I just fell on. I think I just fell on my own. <laughs> um, so, you know, we we were less uh, collectively, maybe the folks of us who think about where OGM discusses things, which is a fairly small group, but it's non-zero. It's actually uh, me and Jerry and Rob O'Keefe and and a few other people. Um, uh, anyway, uh, we were less sophisticated at the time, so. Um, I, I set up a discourse as yet another uh, uh, conversation space. Um, the software is not perfect, um, and, and that was one of the troubles that we had, but it is really good. Um, and, uh, and we got a lot of engagement. Uh, so the, the, the point where, where I made the decision to, to Picklet was um, we, uh, Jerry is a, uh, Jerry is a great convener and a very soft manager. Um, so, uh, so it was that the conversations had gotten to the point where it needed some gardening and pruning and <clears throat> uh, resets of the categories. The original categories that we had were just kind of like Jerry and me in a rush, actually, because of some time deadline we had, external deadline. <clears throat> we kind of came up with some categories and like, okay, let's talk. And uh, we got a bunch of conversation. We got to the point where we needed to trim it and move it and stuff like that. Discourse is amazing software for kind of moving conversations around, but you have to have an editorial team, a, a facilitation team that does that. We had a few people who were willing to do facilitation and editorial, um, Rob O'Keefe and Bill Anderson and me, maybe one or two other people, uh, maybe Charles. Um, so we had a, we had a, we still have a Mattermost channel um, about uh, uh, doing facilitation for the forum. Um, we couldn't, that team couldn't get a charter from OGM, uh, couldn't get a charter, couldn't get a decision on, yes, let's go ahead with your proposal. We had a nice proposal for how to re reorganize things and we're willing to do the work to reorganize it. And because OGM is a fluffy ball of things attracted around Jerry. It doesn't have a decision point. And so uh, it, that was basically the, where it failed. Uh, it failed to be able to decide to have some governance and structure and facilitation, even though we, we had the resources for it, which was, um, which was painful. Um, and I don't, I don't have any blame, uh, you know, it's a, it's an, a blameless situation, but, um, but that's what happened. Um, I, another a, a thing that we might have done, we could have done, is instead of a small team and an unnamed publisher, we didn't have a publisher, basically. Uh, uh, instead of that, we might have um, uh, gone to the the gone to OGM, whatever that is, the the few hundred people who you know participate in OGM in different ways. We could have said, hey. We have this cool resource. We have this cool space. Um, let's let's get some organization and resources around um, facilitating and maintaining and things like that. We didn't do that, and so now you'll see what I'm doing now with the OGM topics thing. I'm I'm structuring a little bit more, um, uh, leaving complicated things like discussion kind of outside of it or to the future. To your point, Gil, um, and. It's the idea specifically has a publisher, whoever that is, uh, an editorial team and uh, editorial facilitation team essentially. And so that's why I think this will succeed uh, if we can get enough resources for it where the OGM forum failed. Sorry wow. for the long background, um, but it, it is kind of interesting and, and kind of presages, I think, the 
the effort and, and resolve, collective resolve it would take to get back into doing discussions well. The, the forum was almost amazing um, uh, and, or it was amazing and, you know, just needed to go the next step up and collectively we weren't able to make that next step. So thanks, right. thanks Gil for the question. Thanks Pete. Uh, Rick Ben Stewart. Yeah, I'd just like to offer a sort of uh, uh, an outside in perspective because I pop into these sessions now and again. I'm not a regular uh, attendee and I, you know, read a few of the things. Um, and one of the questions I have is to what extent do you want to do outreach and expand that? And I just wanted to maybe offer a different perspective on the notion of editing a book. I've done self-publishing. I've done one edited book. And after doing that, I says, I don't want to do that again. Um, and I, I won't go into the reasons of it, but I'm saying there's a lot of work when you bring people together and you have to have an, it is a, a so uh, an alternative strategy is actually is to as a stepping stone is to use uh, or consider using Substack because Substack a lot of authors go there and they trial things out. It's like pre-marketing of your ideas, where people from the outside can see what you're doing and generate interest. Um, so I don't know if anybody. I've just started to experiment with it. I don't know if anybody else has got uh, pros and cons about. Uh, that publishing platform, because a lot of authors do use it to share book chapters with their readership and whatever. So my question is, to what extent does, um, you know, OGM want to do more outreach to people like myself who pop in and out and, uh, you know, have competing, um, you know, interests? So I just throw that down and, and see what people think. Thanks, Rick. And there's a there's a platform discussion we should have. Let's talk more broadly for a bit before we head it back into lots of platforming sort of stuff because I think there's a lot of big issues to to cover here. But Substack is definitely in the in the mix. I think, um, Stuart. Yeah, um, what you just said, Jerry. That's exactly kind of where I was going. I think the idea is a great one, and it would provide some purpose and focus. But what I'm hearing, and I'm sorry, I missed the first five minutes of the call. And I think Pete articulated this in his quote proposal. Um, I think where we are right now, there's a little bit uh, too much of, um, of ready fire aim. We're down into the details of publishing without the real clarity um, of what the vision is um, and, and what success is and, and why exactly it is that we're doing that. Because I think that that would create a real kind of grounding um for the uh for the effort and i and i think that's uh that's real important to have it um explicitly articulated because otherwise we have a lot of uh you know implicit uh understandings of what it is that we're that we're doing thanks Stuart. um pete you're back up um thanks thanks Stuart. that's a, a good point um uh, I have to say this idea is about th three hours old, two hours old. Um, <laughs> so, um, in internet uh, years, though, that's I like do, a decade. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a, a goal um, in the proposal. Uh, the goal would be to have settled, recorded overviews of our usual topics, such that when we ask ourselves, what should this week's topic be? We have language and background from which to choose, or to choose a new topic, which might start a new, spark a new chapter in the in the website um so i would love to flesh that out and i totally agree uh, it, it would it's it's critical to have a, a a clear vision and a clear understanding of it i think also the um it it may be a little bit implicit um but drawing on a couple years of experience with ogm and collective discussion and and uh Failure, failure to actually um, publish that well. Um, uh, the and the 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 roles thing: publisher, editor, author, authorial teams, um, technical publishers. That's really meant for people to step up and say, uh, I, you know, I, I'm willing to commit to whatever you know that role takes. Um, for authors, it would be. You know, I, I sit down and write some stuff together with hopefully with a couple other folks and then we check it every month to make sure it's still up to date or we add in some new stuff that we've learned from the OGM discussions or whatever. 
Um, for the editorial team, it's probably more like we meet uh, for an hour or two once or twice, or one, once every week or once every other week or something like that. Um, the editorial team, by the way, we have, a, we have an interesting model. Um, there's a sense doing group that some of us are participating in. Um, uh, and we've been meeting for about a, a month, maybe a month and a half every week uh, for an hour and a half. Um, we've kind of meandered around, but it is a group of people who have committed to kind of the same kind of work as the editorial team would have to do. Let's, you know, let's, um, let's collectively kind of think about information architecture and, and, and publishing and stuff like that. So I, we have a, we have a number of models. That's not the only one. We have a number of models of people doing the editorial teamwork that I think we can draw on and, and leverage. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to come back to, uh, real quick, uh, I don't want to distract us from the discussion, but um, I wanted to come back real quick to Substack, and um, I forgot who mentioned that now, because I don't see them on the screen. Um, uh, uh, I would love to talk with Substack, about Substack more. I, I run two things off of Substack. I also run, the Plex runs off of Ghost instead of Substack, <clears throat> so I have some some different platform um, experience and thoughts. Um, I've started to look at uh, another self-hosted uh, Substack Lite kind of thing, which I, I kind of recommend. Um, I've had a, a bunch of discussion the past month or so with um, uh, with Jordan Sukut of Lionsburg about, he's like, Pete, let's do a newsletter, you know, and, and should it be WordPress, should it be Ghost, should it, he was, his choice was Ghost. Um, should be Substack, and so I've kind of like gone back and forth with Jordan a bunch about that, and I would love to chat with anybody who's interested. Um, the the gloss on Substack is that uh, it's it's super useful, and they they do a good job at creating audience for your newsletter. Um, the bad news is um, they're the they're they're not necessarily the kind of people that, that OGM folks would want to associate themselves with. Um, so Jordan and I in discussion, um, and, and Medium is another good one, Gil. I've got Medium stuff too. Um, uh, Substack has got a real caution flag for me now. Um, it's uh, because it's venture funded, because it's um, mostly concerned about growing audience, um, because of some of the backgrounds of the, the of the folks involved with Substack, um, it's a it's it's a beautiful and wonderful tool, and I love using it. And it's yet another one of the capitalist strip mine operations, I think. So I, that's a, a really short gloss. I have a kind of a longer rant I'd have to get into uh, to explain the whole thing. But uh, where Jordan and I ended up was uh, self-hosting the uh, newsletter publishing stuff. Um, and I think that's uh, a better way to go. Um, so I, this is, I, I don't mean that <clears throat> to be a long, <clears throat> excuse me, comprehensive discussion about Substack. I mean for it to be a, a bookmark for a much longer discussion, probably not on an OGM call on a, on a special um, topic call. And, and to Jerry's point, let's skip. I would um, really love to defer the software conversation now. There's a lot to learn about it, and we can share it. But this is this is the wrong moment to to eat the next you know period of time for that. I think. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks let's, for shutting me up. Let's talk. <laughs> I, I, and I'm not trying to shut you up. I'm just trying to defer. Well, I, the topic is one that I can go on and on and on about, and it's super uh, this, important. This, and this let's I know. Talk about OGM topics, which is the useful one. Awesome. Thanks, Pete. Um, Dr. Witzel. Hey, thanks everybody. Yeah, Pete, I agree with, with Gil. This is like a great idea and I'm very excited by it and nervous kind of. So, and to me, the issue, I think it's getting back a little bit to what Doug was saying. I'm worried about kind of particularizing the world too much when what we need is holism. And so I don't know how you do chapters in a holistic way kind of. Um, but I, I guess I kind of, I mean, maybe there needs to be some conversation about what open global mind is that kind of is reflected in the values of the thing or something. I don't know. I don't know. And is, is global mind just people or is this like, are we talking a Gaia mind or something? I mean, I feel like, you know, for me coming from this regeneration space where I want to have regenerate uh, kind of a regenerative reductionism, um, 
I want themes going through this or or I don't want to do nouns. I want to do verbs. You know, I mean, I, I think learning and change are the two most important things. So that's what, you know, I don't know, something like that. But um, so that would be my concern kind of is like, I don't want to contribute to the further partitioning of the world. I don't want to contribute to the further problem analysis. I want to be kind of focused on opportunity creation, those kinds of issues. And, you know, how do we kind of make sure what we're doing? And I guess I kind of feel like it probably comes out as you do the table of contents or something, you know, I mean, you're, there's probably a process you go through that, that that helps address these issues. And they're probably early in the process anyway. They're not the tech platform, I would argue they are something else. But but anyway, that would be my big concern is kind of how do we how do we make this, you know, not another, um, uh, you know, book by by uh, uh, who's the anti-fragile guy, Talib, you know, or something like Nassim, that. Nassim Taleb. Yeah. Um, thanks, Dave. Pete, your hand is still up. Um, <laughs> Doug? Okay. Um, I'm wondering also who we are in this and what we want. Uh, I find for myself, I run a blog on Substack, and it's my primary output. So I come here for kind of emergence and soothing and muddling through things around. Uh, I think what Pete's talking about would really suggest that I bring my more logical process uh, into the OGM effort, but that means taking it away from the Substack. And so I'm wondering for most of us, is coming here a secondary support activity to our main activity? And that's going to make it hard for us to participate in what Pete is proposing. Thanks, Doug. Um, I've got a bunch of things I'd like to put in the room. I've got my notes in, in the chat, so I'll just uh, put all of the notes in and then I'll, I'll talk through them. So first, Oh my God, yay, persistent artifacts. Like I've been, one of my pet peeves of all conversations I'm involved in like this is that brilliant things go by on private mailing lists and other sorts of places and don't make their way out into the world. And that we keep repeating the same conversations over and over again. And that we don't build a, a cumulative, ever improving resources around these things. And so what Pete is describing feels like some of those answers uh, as well as a book uh, to, to write, which is awesome. Um, Edited volumes, I hadn't sort of heard the terms. So of course, in my brain this morning, I, I connected that to anthologies and to collected works and a bunch of other things. These are all each different. Edited volumes are really interesting. I like that as a, as a framing, just like Wikipedia has encyclopedia as a framing that was really helpful to, uh, to Wikipedia getting off the ground. Um, one concern I have is that it sounds like, Pete, from your proposal, that we would convert these weekly calls into the project of making this book. Okay, so you're suggesting a new set of calls and, and a separate project, because as Doug was just saying, and this is an interesting question, because um, as Doug was just expressing, he likes to come here and sort of for the, for the bonhomie and the muddling through, uh, and the just sort of... Uh, soaking in the community, which I deeply appreciate. Uh, and I also know that some of us are, are, are concerned or irritated for our lack of getting things done, our lack of mission, uh, other things like that. So I'm kind of ambivalent on that front because if, and I think that if we were to do every other call, like now we do every other call as topic, every other call as check-in, if we were to, to alternate every other call to do this project, we probably would never, never get this done. It needs more of a rhythm. It needs more time devoted to it than twice a month, for example. So, so clearly there'd have to be other kinds of things. Um, but if we took three months to see how far we could push this and, and, and used all of the OGM Thursday calls to do this for three months, I would not have a problem with that. I would think that would be a really interesting, different way for us to sort of ram a jamma together. We would learn a bunch of things about each other. We would get things done, but this would be more like an editorial meeting or a or a prog you know a, a project management board because we would then be going and writing chunks that we cared about. So so that's really interesting to me, and I, I I'd love to know what everybody thinks. Um, I don't really want to. And this is only my personal opinion. I don't really want to write a book that's all about the crises. And the outline that Pete got back from, hey, what would socially conscious people do was, was a description of the major crises. In my brain, I have a thought called there are now five, ma five major crises or six or seven. I connected them all. I, I curate all that information. I really dearly want there to be reference resources online that are excellent that collect up these different crises and that collect up what's broken 
um, and, and that allow for different people's theories about what's broken and what to do about it. I think that's really interesting. And so, so um, for, for me, like, like the book that, that I still haven't published that, that I'm written and that I'm writing in my head is like the start of the book is like, hey, I hope if you're reading this that you're convinced that there's a bunch of crises going on. I'm not going to try to paint them all for you. Um, go over here if you'd like to learn about uh, about the crises. And and uh, you know if this works, then go over here means go to the resources that that we've just sort of described possibly doing. Uh, but I'm interested in using those resources and sort of overlaying on top of them uh, to to write a book that overlays here. And Pete, Pete's heard me say this a, a couple different times, but um, I'll put I'll post a couple of uh, of links in the chat. Uh, I've got two videos I did uh, a while ago. One is that um, presentations and books are just playlists. Of, uh, and that there are playlists of nuggets. And I have a different video, which I did long ago, called Nuggets, Narratives, and Points of View. And one of my desires and goals is to actually co-author a book alongside other people writing books that share nuggets, that share chapters, so that if we had uh, a really good, dense, pithy write-up of uh, pandemic management and what what you know what what broke about this this pandemic and what to do next time that could be commonly used by a bunch of people or about uh, regenerative agriculture. If there, if there was a really pithy and beautiful uh, piece out there that we crafted and curated. And when I say I don't wanna publish a book about the crises, I really would love to participate in the making of the artifacts that explain each of the crises. I think that that's an extremely important work. And so, uh, and so what, what, I, what I'm envisioning here is that we could have six books or N books come out of this process and there's Gitbook, there's a bunch of uh, sort of uh, markdown to book kind of engines. Uh, several of us have talked on other calls about how do you get books out. If we can manage to get the making a book thing into Kindle uh, file format or KDP or EPUB or whatever other formats uh, it is, if we can make that sort of simple. And if along the way we plug in things like Substack slash Go slash whatever so that our progress reports wind up being a newsletter that keeps everybody sort of up to date that is a different vehicle for our ideas out. So, so I'm, I'm interested in things like Substack and other sorts of tools because um, they're a way of, of making the work have a life before you're done publishing a book because historically author goes away for five years, writes a book, puts it in the publishing mechanism, which is another two years. And then finally, there's a thing on the shelf which is protected by being on paper that nobody wants you to Xerox or electronic that nobody wants you to copy and mark up and break apart. So I think our process here is the opposite of that. Um, so I would propose at the risk of, of, of complexifying this too much, but, but what having multiple books does is it allows us to not have to reach consensus on what the one book is, which I think is gonna be really hard for this group because we have a lot of different priorities and wishes and desires. And it allows several of us, whoever wants to step up and sort of do it, to go write a book without having to write the whole book because several of us would be like, oh, there needs to be a general chapter about this mechanism, this dynamic that four of us really care about and agree about. Let's the four of us write that nugget and then place that into the sphere of, of the book, the, the, the co-book that we're trying to write. So um, sorry if that's too many things, but that this feels like a very OGME mission-y kind of project. I like that about it as well. Uh, and that is what I wanted to throw in. Stuart, then Pete, then Ken. Yeah, um, book is static. <laughs> a book is static; it's not living. And I and I think that um, the areas of of inquiry, the things that we want to write about, are very much living and evolving and emerging. And so I I'm 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 feeling a lot of caution about thinking about this in terms of some kind of a, a paper book, um, especially given the technology skills of so many people here on this call. Um, the idea of something that's living, that keeps growing, um, seems to me more appropriate for this group. Um, um, Stuart, I totally agree. And I've got a riff on how books are just souvenirs. They're just snapshots at a point in time. Um, and I completely agree. And the first paragraph of the book I'd like to write says, hey, thanks for buying this souvenir. The real thing lives online and is alive. 
And every nugget is connected to the discussion and communities that are really concerned about that and to resources if you wanted to go do something about it and everything you just said, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and, th and that's that I think is, is what this group is kind of, in some ways, uniquely qualified to provide to the world and put out into the world. Mm -hmm. uh, Pete, sorry. Um, thanks, thanks all, um, and totally agree, Stuart, uh, and and with Jerry. Um, I, for better or for worse, I I started with a book metaphor to kind of describe the idea of what you know what edited volume is. Um, but it, I really, I really uh, <clears throat> was thinking as a as a living website and discussion, you know, discussion around that community outreach, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's not supposed to be static. It's supposed to be a living thing. Um, I'm going to go real quick. Um, in my excitement to wave a caution flag for Substack and really talk to me first before you get serious with Substack. Um, uh, Rick, the, the idea that Rick was trying to get across, I think, is more of, hey, let's do community outreach using something like Substack or whatever, Ghost or, you know, whatever, something that gets the, the work of what we're doing out into the world as we do it. Um, and and I, I totally agree with that idea. I think community out, outreach is an important, important part of generating this kind of stuff. I would like to see us build a bit of, to, but before we engage with the world, um, I would like to see the subset of OGM um, that I'm calling the publisher and the uh, editorial team and the authorial teams. I would like to see those folks get um, a bit of an, uh, a nugget put together before we start engaging with the outside world. Um, I think we need to attend to our knitting and need to come together as a group to start to build something and then start to uh, use what we're building and, and you know, both the, the asset that we've got and the live active building you know, hey, here's a new chapter on um, and join our next call at, I think that's a great thing, but I would really love for us to get some process, some um, some uh, experience working together uh, as as a team before we, we kind of like out, you know, turn that out into the world. Um, Doug C talked about, uh, yikes, uh, you know, <laughs> Right now I'm, I'm publishing stuff uh, and I, yeah, I could divert part of that effort into, you know, into OGM topics, pros and cons, et cetera. Uh, Jerry, Jerry talked about, you know, maybe we should take the Thursday call and turn it into, you know, let's build our OB, OGM topics uh, website asset thing for three months. I, I like the idea of the three months. Um, personally, I really miss, um, I really miss the bon ami, uh, the camaraderie, the the feeling of coming to a church service, uh, non-denominational church service, um, uh, when we do not that on the Thursday calls. So personally, I would rather have the Thursday calls always be check-in calls, and then to have some other calls that do the work of of topic stuff. Um, I'm fine with the, the the compromise of half topic calls and half um, uh, spirit, spirit calls. Um, uh, I, I, I'm not sure that I would want to lose all the spirit calls. Um, uh, so, so to come back to, to Doug C's point, you know, how do we split the baby? I, the, the way I think of it, I think the editorial team needs to meet, uh, every week or every other week for like an hour, hour and a half, kind of about the same scale of the sense doing team right now. Um, it's, it's a chunk of your week. Uh, it's not a huge chunk of your week. And this is for the editorial team. The auth author teams, um, I think, you know, it's it's how much time you have. I, I think you could sit down over a weekend and, you know, with, with your folks uh, bang out, you know, a decent chapter on whatever, right? Um, uh, and then, and then it's maintenance after that. You know, let's let's meet for an hour every month or something like that. Talk about, you know, kind of go over who heard what on the OGM calls that are germane to our thing. Uh, let's either grab some of the new arguments and add them in, or let's add a link to a couple of videos or into Jerry's brain or something like that. 
that for the authorial teams, there's an upfront, for authors, there's an upfront bolus of, hey, let's build something. That doesn't have to be very long. It could be literally a couple hours um, or, or 20 minutes <laughs> with a chat bot. I'm, I'm making a joke, folks. Um, uh, or maybe I'm not. Uh, but so there's a initial, you know, two, four, six, eight, ten 10 hours of let's write a nice article. Let's write a, a chapter. But then after that, it goes into maintenance mode and it's not a big, a big deal. Um, uh, Jerry and uh, Dave both talked about, mm, I don't know if I want to talk about crises, you know, like I don't want to be in, in your face. Hey, let's talk about all the problems in the world. Let's talk about holistic holism and solutions. Um, I like that. Uh, I think I think there needs to, I, I don't have a preference. Um, I leave that up to the publishing team uh, to kind of decide. And, you know, I, I think of Jerry as kind of the core of the publishing team, uh, if he's if he's willing. Um, I don't really care one way or the other. I do think it's important um, because in my life, and I think in, in each of our lives or most of our lives, you come to that point in, in your week and it's like, shoot, I have to confront society and um, gun control. I have to confront society and lack of democracy. I have to confront society and decide whether or not to go to the mall and wear a mask or not. You know, um, I, I, I have to confront society's uh, ability or lack of ability to control a pandemic well. Um, so there at least needs to be a, a kind of a topics page. Hey, if you want to read about um, uh, uh, pandemic response. Um, this is the part of of our topic thing that um, uh, that we that would you where you want to go hunt for you know what we think about pandemics or what we think about guns or what we think about democracy or what we think about of of war in Ukraine. So that could be just a jump page, a fact thing, and then it goes into the the main beat, meat of the thing, which is much more holistic, much more um, you know of a of a uh, positive um, take instead of a crisis uh, bound take. I'm I'm cool with that. Um, thinking about mixability, I love Jerry's uh, thing of mixability. Massive Wiki is built that way, uh, as it happens. Um, uh, not that we would necessarily need to use Massive Wiki, not that Massive Wiki is the only thing that, that's built that way, but Massive Wiki is built for remixing. Um, and uh, it's the easiest way to use Massive Wiki is to kind of mix and rematch from di between different wikis. Um, the other thing that's really important is to think about the license that you want to share under. Um, and I think we're all pretty cool with, with licensing, but I it, it may or may not, I, I actually bridled, I, I still bristle when everybody talks about a license. It's like, dude, what I want to do is write and put stuff out on the world. And I want people to do the right thing with it. So for a long time, I was, I, I, I think I started putting licenses, uh, you know, do the right thing with, with this, you know. Um, it turns out that in the real world, you have to decide what you, you, you have a copyright on whatever you publish unless you specifically disclaim it. Um, and then you have to do that very carefully to make sure that you've disclaimed it well. So anyway, because we live in a copyright regime world, things need a copyright, and then you need to decide what the copyright means. So probably what we want is uh, CC attribution, Creative Commons attribution. Maybe we want public domain, but that's one of the big topics to talk about with the publishing team and the editorial team and the authors is let's all agree with a license and hopefully it, it's a license where we can do remixing. Um, uh, maybe not even hopefully. Uh, obviously, it's going to be a license where we do remixing. So it's an important conversation to have and, and to you know, make sure everybody signs up for the whatever, whatever solution we did. Because in, you know, when you put your information out in the world, it turns also to live in the world of um, copyright and, and you have to make sure that you've crossed your I's and dotted your T's, so a, to speak. A brief thing uh, inspired by the mention of Frodo Hegland and the future of text in the chat. Um, it would be useful at the beginning of this project to do a quick sweep through other communities and other projects we know about that are doing near, near neighbor work because some of them have solved a bunch of these problems. 
and we may want to adopt exactly what they've done as our way of moving forward, whether it's technology choices, license choices, or something else. Um, Ken, Mark, then uh, iPhone, which I think is Eric, but I'm not sure. John Kelly, I think. Oh, it's John Kelly. Awesome. Thank you. And I'm going to have to, I'm going to switch to the phone at the top of the hour and go make an airport run. Uh, so I will hand, pass the con over to somebody who can actually see who's in the in the call to run it. So I'll just be a participant then, but go ahead, Ken. So this is a Taoist riddle. How does a Taoist master change the course of a mighty river? Who knows the answer to this? Gil knows the answer to this. I'm not going to call on you, Gil. No, you don't know the answer? She walks upstream far enough and moves a single pebble. <laughs> so I'm really interested when we talk about dividing the world up to how far upstream do we need to walk to move that pebble so that we get a very different, the river takes a different course. Um, like Dave and, and some other people have mentioned here, I think we don't need to um, uh, convince people that the world's in a state of crisis. That's a given at this point. And those who are denying it, there's no point in attempting to engage with them because they're just going to waste your time. You know, um, what's that? The principle it takes so much more effort to refute bullshit than to create it. So, just let's focus on what we can do. And um, I really like this idea that that Pete's put forward. Not entirely sure how it'll all work out, but I think it's it's it moves us a little bit more in a sense doing direction of instead of just sitting here talking, we actually start to create a record and and a way to track what's going on. Brandolini's law, thank you. Um, way to track stuff and and get ourselves some traction in the in the sense of doing that. So um, I think one of the leverage points, one of the places to move a pebble is around ideologies and in particular neoliberal capital listen as an ideology has probably done more harm to the world than any other ideology that i can think of so that might be an interesting topic um to throw in there but maybe we can have a section on you know ideologies that are that are healthful and wholesome and ideologies that are destructive thank you and from the model i'm trying to use that would be a starting point for an interesting book that cuts across through this medium. And that would be a point of view to take through the things that we're collecting together here. Um, and it's it's one I would love to read and help write. Um, Mark. Oh, pause, gosh, damn it. Thank you, please do. Hi. Um, let's see. Microphone? You're on. We hear you. Yeah. Um, just kind of demonstrating technology. Hi. Um, boy, technology sucks. Um, as a technologist, as a software uh, debugger, I just found so many uh, problems with the uh, Internet Archive this morning. Um, and posted them. Um, yeah, we basically have a great team, um, the UX team, uh, user experience team. I'm really proud to be on it. Um, and we coordinate really well. Um, we use uh, Issue Tracker. I think it's called Jira. Um, and I just wanted to point out that Frode Hegland has been somebody I've known since God knows when, uh, but over 20 years. And he's been slowly, slowly building his team. And boy, do they integrate um, from, from the newbies to um, who was one of the inventors of the internet? Um, Al Gore. Uh, uh, Al, Gore exactly. <laughs> Al Gore. Al Gore is not on uh, <laughs> uh, team. Let's see. Um, so I posted, and I should post it again, his YouTube um I, if you go to YouTube and, and search for Frodo Hegland, um, Hegland, I think it's Hegland. Um, basically, you can see his team working in real time. And you know, he has check-in calls, um, I think every Monday and Friday or Monday. Yeah, but, but basically, he's doing, and it's taken him a hell of a long time 
um, I always quote um, Kevin Kelly, biological processes take biological time. Technological processes go way too fast and rushing is a symptom of trauma as I've learned from my um, trauma therapy and trauma healing. Um, I don't want to rush this. Um, some people think, oh my God, the world's going to end. The world's never going to end. Except, you know, billions of years from now, humanity could end. Parts of nature, you know, the biological world, many different organisms can come to extinction, including our, our species. Um, I don't panic. I slow down. I've been taught to slow down. And I've learned from painful experience that when I rush, I hurt myself. So, you know, basically three things. Frodo Hagelin, don't rush. Love y'all. Thanks. Thanks, Mark. Gil. And feel free to pause. Yeah, pause is good, Mark. Thank you for the reminder that when we rush, we hurt ourselves and break things. <clears throat> so just, uh, I'm, I'm loving this conversation. It's very rich. I'm chatting a bunch here and copying a lot of things. And um, I, I echo what I said at the start, Pete, I, I really like this provocation. Let's do some, there's something here to do. We don't know exactly what it is, but yeah. Um, um, there have been a couple of comments, Jerry, I think yours most recently, that we don't need to do a compendium of what the fuck is wrong with everything. There's a lot of that out there. That's not our job. Uh, there's, yeah, well, hang on, hang on. Let me, let me, let me go with it. I can, I can still see you, by the way. You seem to not be in your car. No, I haven't. I, I, I start moving in three minutes, so okay. I'm still here. Yeah. Um, see, actually, this is an avatar substitute. I'm being synthetically generated already. It's working pretty well. Oh, look at yeah. this. Looks like me. Ow. Yeah. Feels like me, Jerry Bing. So, um, right. stop it, you guys. Um, um, there's a lot of stuff about what's wrong. Um, there's not enough stuff about what's right and what people are doing that is working and on the trail and when walking upstream toward the pebble. Um, um, Stan Robertson did some of that in Ministry for the Future. Hawken did some of that in um, Blessed Unrest. Um, so I'm I'm more interested in in solution sets than in well, Witzel. Thank you for flagging the solution problem. But I'm more, more interested in what people are doing that's generative um, than than a litany of ills. But in between, and Jerry, this is where I think your this is is that diagnosing the system is actually a really important piece of the work. Knowing you know figuring out which stream or which stream you walk up and which pebble you move. Um, and uh, somebody, I don't know who the quote is from, but somebody said that prescription without diagnosis is malpractice. Uh, and I think there's there's enormous wisdom and astuteness here to be going into that piece called diagnosing, uh, different than litany of problem. So that that I think lives in this middle range. Something for us to consider. That's it for now. Um, Hank, go ahead, and then I'm going to ask who would like to step in and play host from here forward. Um, Gil, you still have your hand up. Oh, Hank, you took your hand down. Uh, go ahead. Uh, you're muted, so we can't actually hear you. No, I didn't mean to put my hand down. That's what I thought. Um, okay. Cool. So why don't you go ahead, and uh, Ken, would you play host from here? Thank you. Yeah, I think it's... A Drive great... safely, Jerry. <laughs> I think it's a great discussion, uh, as Gil said. I mean, there's a lot uh, of agreement that uh, people think it's an exciting idea. People think, let's do something, a lot of motivation. So what I'd like to suggest is that before the end of the call, a couple of volunteers uh, put their hands up and say, I'll do something 
I'll work out something, I'll write something, I'll start a prototype, I'll uh, uh, fill in more information on the website that uh, and the web link that uh, Pete uh, showed us at the beginning of the call, so that by this time next week, there's actually something more being done. Because everyone seems to agree it's a good thing to do. And there's lots of uh, yes buts and uh, only ifs, but we'll figure out more about that uh when we do some learning by doing so i'll keep it at that yeah i just <clears throat> pardon me two things one i just wanted to repeat the idea of ready fire aim versus ready aim fire um, as being real important, and I'm hearing a lot of fire um, <clears throat> and that big vision conversation really, really hasn't taken place. Um, that's one, and maybe it has in in, in little snippets. I, I and I wanted to punctuate what Gil said about um, <clears throat> not writing about what the problems are, but you know the diagnosis is so important, and also the idea of um, you know, the, the frame that comes up in my mind is we have <clears throat> challenges and opportunities. Um, <laughs> that's all. Welcome, Gabrielle. We're in the middle of a very intense conversation uh, that sprang from Pete's. I don't know if you had a chance to see the OGM list this morning about Pete's idea of um, edited volumes, but I just wanted to welcome you. Uh, thanks for coming. Thanks. Good to be here. Dave. Yeah, I just wanted to fly. I don't know if everybody else is getting this, but your audio is breaking up for me. I actually think it's a legitimate pit. Pairing the proposal probably answers a whole bunch of these questions. So, Dave, they're, sorry, they're just September or something. Dave, can you repeat? You, your audio is very muddled. Um, can you repeat that, please? Oh, sorry about that. I'm um, having a wonky internet here. Uh, I was going to, there's a link in the chat for an NSF open source ecosystem proposal that's due in September. And I actually think you could apply for that with this uh, if you designed it correctly. Uh, um, Sorry, Dave, you're breaking up again. Okay. Sorry. Well, well, we're not blaming you. It's just you know, pay your pay your ISP. He put it back in the chat for him. Yeah. So, Dave, we'll we'll come back to you if you get your. Electrons in order, um, Hank. Yes. Uh, yeah, I just like to say I do agree with the Stuart uh, when you uh, warn us about ready, fire, aim, or even fire, 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 then ready and aim. But I've learned so much throughout uh, my life so far about the power of uh, of learning by doing. We have so many excellent conversations in in this chat and in a lot of the other uh, OGM and Matamos chats. But I think if we only stick with conversations, we'll never learn to uh, to. How should I say it? We'll never learn to multitask, ready, aim, and fire. So that's why I really like to keep suggesting, let's do something first. And by, by understanding what went right and what went wrong, what we are doing, uh, we'll improve the prototype. Thanks, Hank. Hey, Bill, welcome. Um, there have been a few, there's some people on the call who have not spoken yet. Um, just want to create a space for anybody who would like to step in. Um, and if not, we'll go to Mark in a second. But anybody want to jump in and say anything? Doug? You're muted. Here we go. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of um, with Stuart in the ready fire aim camp. 
Um, and uh, there's, there's a tendency to uh, start things at chapter four or five in generating new and um, leave out sort of foundational steps that, that are essential to uh, sustainability and actually thriveability in, in launching new things. And they're sort of rooted in, in, in values and purpose territory that, um, you know, there, there is a value component of a collect, collective or group of collaborators. Um, and if, if the, the values dimension of each individual are integrated from the beginning, then it invites um, the risk of, of um, separations or destructive effects later when the absence of, of, in, of that level of integration for the individuals involves uh, bubbles up. Um, and on the purpose side of things, I think Ken touched on something with, with, his, um, with his teaching. <laughs> about the pebble upstream, um, that there's also a, a specificity of intention in, in purpose, in what's the, the contribution of value to the world, what's the, what's the thing that's providing the fire and the emotional passion underlying what's to be born, um, and, and the need for that to be explicit and aligned as well. Um, as sort of a foundational piece. Um, so I'll, I'll stop there, but I just throw that out as a potential place to start um, to, to put a stake in the ground, to ground and earth what you're about to birth um, and um, in service to providing a, a, a reference, a North Star reference, both on a values and, and on a purpose dimension going forward. So as it emerges and as you grow what you're about to bring to the world, um, you have an uh, orientation reference um, to cross-check against as you go to make sure that what's being done going forward um, is in alignment um, and with, both with values and with the the, the larger than individual participant value contribution and, and reason for doing it uh, as you go. And I'll stop there. Thanks, Doug. Mr. Carenza. Hola, que tal? Uh, to respond with a song snippet to Doug from Joni Mitchell, a beautiful poet. I am as constant as the northern star. Constantly in the darkness, where's that at? If you want me, I'll be in the bar. <laughs> thanks, Doug. Um, thanks, both Dougs. So, as a cybernetician, a uh, uh, scholar of... Uh, the cybernetics um, history. Um, I'd like to point out that there are many ways to get in a muddle and make mistakes, as per Jerry, uh, Gregory Bateson. There's ready, ready, ready. Ready, ready, ready is what depressed people do. They prepare and prepare and prepare and they never act. Aim, aim, aim. Well, perfectionism. Boy, is that dangerous as well. Um, Fire, fire, fire. Well, that's been mentioned already. I want to point out, as somebody who studies living systems, living systems are biological. A computer is not a living system. The internet is not a living system. They're part of the umwelt. They're part of the um, Lebenswelt, the living world that biological systems live in. A living system, when applied to the internet, is a metaphor. 
the internet is not and will likely never be alive. And I so believe that the category mistakes of our cognitive projections, you know, how a child um, gives derived intentionality to a teddy bear, um, to you know, how people give derived intentionality to AI, dangerous, because that is something that we can manipulate ourselves into trusting machines and inanimate objects and advertisements, marketing, politics. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Gil. Unmute, Gil. I think he's taken a little pause. This is my little pause here. <laughs> they're bigger than I thought they should be. They're, they're bigger than Donald Trump's. <laughs> um, no, I think the little pause is important. Mark, thank you so much for that. Thank you so much. Uh, very important, very well said. Um, um, you know, I've been, I've been thinking a lot lately about the living world, um, as the frame of all the things that I'm thinking and doing, and as the, 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 the challenge of our time of what might it be like if we actually lived as though we lived belong, as, as though we actually belonged to the living world, uh, uh, and so um, thank you for flagging the runaway metaphors. Um, it strikes me as I play with our friends at ChatGPT um, that the distinguishing feature between AIs and humans, this is a different Turing test maybe, is that they don't care and they can't. Uh, and we do and we can't not. And I think there's something very important in that distinction. Uh, and in being, you know, we humans live in metaphor. We can't, it's one of the many things that we can't not do, but being very attentive to them and how we use them and how they use us strikes me as really important. So Mark, thank you for that. Uh, back to the more uh, tactical piece of this thing. Uh, I think Stuart maybe got misquoted at some point, or maybe I misheard him. Uh, but I think, Stuart, you were calling for ready, fire, aim. Um, no, no, I was calling for ready, aim, ready, aim, fire. We weren't okay. doing enough aiming. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm calling, I'm calling for ready, fire, aim then. So I'm disagreeing with you. Um, but let me say what I mean by that. So the ready is many of the things that people have been talking about is the taking the time and being, you know, and settling in and breathing and getting a sense of what is it that we're about, you know, what's behind Pete's proposal or what's in Pete in this proposal and what do we aspire to with this thing? Um, but then from there, I don't want to spend a lot of time aiming. I want to build something, build some shit fast, mock it up, look at it, tear it apart, build it again, tear it apart, figure out what we're doing in the doing of it. Because we're trying to do something that's, you know, sort of pieces have been done, but the whole vision that I'm hearing from Pete um, I don't know anybody who's done it yet. Maybe some of you do. And the, it may be that the best way to learn how to do it is to ready, plenty of time for ready, fire, break it, smash it, tear it apart, diagnose it, learn what happened. And after a bunch of that, then, then come back and aim and then build the actual thing. That's it. That's a thought. Just to shorthand, what I'm trying to say is, you know, Simon Sinek has got this phrase, what's your why? In, in some ways, what, what I think we need to do is, what's the why for this project? Um, and then, yeah, I, I'm, I'm absolutely fine with the idea, Gil, you know, of, of, you know, fire and let's see where we get and then iterate as we go forward as, a, as just a, a framing suggestion. Mm -hmm. Uh, if I can comment just quickly, I also think that um, 
I know the ready fire aim is a is a you know it's, it's kind of a trite saying that you know like you're not really prepared, but I think what Pete's proposing is that we we're ready. Let's fire something off aimed at a greater coherence of what we're doing. And we'll learn along the way where we're missing so that we'll get more and more accurate with our aim as we go along. Pete. Um, thank, thanks, Ken. That's that's actually um, a really good way to put it, I think. Um, I, I wanted to talk a little bit, mostly in re reply to Doug B, um, but um, also to Stuart, um, who cautions us to know what you know, what what are we trying to accomplish? Let's talk about that before we try to accomplish it. Um, I totally agree. Um, we, we don't do that enough, uh, neither OGM nor uh, most of the world. Uh, um, I really like what Hank said, uh, you know, let's just start doing something and we'll learn, uh, which is kind of what Ken said. Um, I wanted to come back to what uh, Doug uh, Breitbart said um, and <laughs> um, and completely, well, completely agree uh, and relate that some of us are in a little bit different place. Um, and so, um, so when I think of that, uh, so I think of where I am in the, in, in the space of OGM and, um, and then I can kind of think from there kind of to a continuum of, of folks in OGM. So I want to kind of acknowledge that I'm, I'm coming from probably a very far end of, of the experience with OGM and there are people all the way uh, in that continuum. So at the other end of the continuum are people who know about OGM and hear about the news once in a while. Maybe they read the Plex. Um, maybe they are on Mattermost and they don't see a lot of the list discussions. Um, maybe they're on the list and they don't see any of the Mattermost discussions. Um, maybe they come uh, an hour and a half a week uh, once in a while. So those are OGM folks. Um, and, and they don't have a lot of experience with being, you know, doing the OGM thing. Um, Along with Jerry and maybe just a few other folks, um, Stacy's one of them, interestingly enough, and we haven't heard from you yet, Stacy. Um, uh, my experience of OGM is that Jerry and I have an hour together most most weeks talking about OGM and other stuff. Um, uh, along with this call, um, I see Jerry and some of the other OGM folks in an hour for FJB and an hour for Fellowship Link. Um, those calls will often go a little bit longer. Um, I hang out with the flotilla folks uh, for another hour every week, and that's kind of OGM, even though we don't know about it very well. For the last six weeks, I've been spending time with the sense doing folks an hour and a half every week and some homework calls. Um, uh, uh, some of us participated in the Dawn of Everything uh, book club, uh, which was hugely generative uh, twice, you know, for like six weeks, six months or something like that, every other week. Um, uh, and then some of us have even part participated in our late great uh, Kiko Lab um, or in Lionsburg, uh, which is not yet late, um, not quite yeah. great yet, but going there. Um, and interestingly enough, we had um, before Lionsburg has been going through ups and downs. Um, and I don't mean like goods and bads, I, I literally mean kind of like, there's a lot of Lionsburg and then there's not very much Lionsburg and there's a lot of Lionsburg and not very much Lionsburg. Right now, uh, Jordan and I are meeting semi-regularly. So I'm also in the Lionsburg camp doing something similar where I'm doing with uh, Jerry. Um, Lionsburg had this really interesting thing as it was coming up this year uh, in January, February, we said, hey, we should do kind of exactly what you said, Doug. Let's get together and, and talk about what we called it. Um, uh, shoot, now I can't recall it. Um, uh, we called it social dimensions. What are the social dimensions? What are the, the conditions that we want to kind of set as a small group? for the larger group that's going to come because Lionsburg's, Lionsburg's, Lionsburg vision is to exponentially grow and have billions of participants in you know, five, five to seven years. 
um, and all oriented towards solving the world's problems um, and being better people. So it's a, it's a good vision, even though it's quite expansive. Um, the Social Dimensions crew uh, was, we met for like a couple months, um, probably an hour every week or something like that. And we did a lot of the work of kind of, you know, where should we be? What should we do? And then we launched with everybody. Um, so we had a problem actually where the Social Dimensions crew were way ahead emotionally and, and collectively in, in how to work together than the rest of the folks and end up causing problems actually. Um, I don't mean that to be a cautionary tale, but, um, and, and I don't mean to boast or brag. I especially don't mean to boast or brag. I spent a lot of time in OGM, but the fact of it is that I do. Um, what I wanted to say here, and now I think I've, I feel like I've kind of blown the, blown what I was trying to say by litanizing. But what I wanted to say is that for this particular project, for OGM Topics, um, I'm proposing something that I am pretty sure is well within our capabilities and well within the team of folks who have curated and uh, uh, cared for, held carefully in hands, um, uh, both on these calls and then the other attending calls that, that we have within the OGM spheres. Um, we have a lot of experience as a group working together, um, and we have a lot of experience uh, as a group working together to put together websites like the one that we're kind of talking about. Um, I, I think that folks here, you know, probably you have that kind of in the background, but I, I, I wanted to say that, hey, uh, we got you. Um, uh, if, if we can get folks together for the kinds of resource um, uh, commitments I'm talking about, you know, an, an hour and a half uh, every week or two for the editorial team, um, the commitment from a publishing team, Jerry and whoever else, uh, to, to actually make decisions about what this thing is supposed to be. Uh, and I don't mean they're the ones that like, ideate and decide. What I mean by that is they're the ones that, that make sure a decision gets made and make sure to arbitrate the decision. Um, editorial teams suggest that we, you know, publish on papyrus or editorial teams suggest that we um, have an information architecture like this. Hey, publisher, is that okay? That's what I'm talking about, a decision um, being made. Um, so publisher has to has to have a commitment to to be the the core arbiter. Um, editorial team needs to meet an hour and a half every week or two. Um, authors uh, need to put nose to grindstone or pen to paper uh, for a few hours to get started, and then uh, commit to continuing to do that in the long term. Um, that doesn't seem like a big resource requirement. We're kind of at that level right now. It might mean some of us have another hour or two out of hour, probably of our you know average hour of a week uh, over over weeks. Um, and the rest of it, um, foundational steps, um, thrivability, uh, grounding and earthing what we're about to birth. Um, Doug, that's a great phrase. Um, we we have that. We have that already. And we're not taking advantage of it every time we have been meeting week after or week after week after week in these calls. We we spend our energy um, and it dissipates instead of um, accumulating. And so all this project is, and, and I don't actually I don't envision it impacting the Thursday calls at all. Jerry talked about maybe it would. Um, uh, just kind of the just if if we could we could continue the Thursday calls just as they are and 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 build a little bit of a structure to kind of a catchment basement that lets us build something rather than continue to dissipate our energy. So um, from the technical publishing team, um, if if uh, if I'm elected, um, I got you. Um, I think Jerry's got you. There are a bunch of us: um, uh, Ken, Bill Anderson, Hank, uh, Gil. We, we know how to do this. We do actually know how to do it. And I think the concatenation of all of our calls going back in time 
even that we have in our wetware, we have kind of a shared set, set of values and philosophies and things like that, which is not necessarily to say that we all agree. We definitely have some, some differences of opinions and different ways to think about things, but we have enough to sit at a table together and, and build this thing and, and make it a, a useful artifact first for ourselves and then you know, outward into the world. Thanks, Thanks, Pete. Stacy. before you go, I'm going to actually uh, riff off of what Hank said. And if you're interested in um, participating in this, would you put your name in the chat so that Pete knows who uh, we can talk to about having another call dedicated to this? Okay, no worries about, I mean, just uh, please don't take this on unless you know you have the time. So totally respect that, Eric, that's good modeling. Okay, Stacy. And we got something done on an OGM call. We actually got a tangible outcome. Oh my God, this is a first. <laughs> I just wanted to say real quick, thank you, Pete. I agree with you 100%. Um, I just wanted to add that to Doug's point, which I also agree with. That's why I suggested, I really think that if we were to look at a, a table of contents and the prospective authors were to decide where they would fit in, what their chapter would be, that would take care of a lot of figuring out the why am I involved in this project? Who is involved? It, it would just answer a lot of different questions for different people. And I just wanted to highlight that. Thanks. Thanks, Stacy. That's great. Still some folks that haven't spoken. Jose, do you want to say anything while you're here? Don't have to. No, I was trying to shut up, but you're pulling, you're making me talk. Um, yeah, why? because I understand the idea of documenting things, but it still feels like we're not moving things forward. We're just sort of recapturing what we've been recapturing in our conversations. And I think part of the reason that we don't move things forward is because we're just rehashing the same things over and over again in many calls, not just OGM, but in calls everywhere. And how do we go beyond that? And I think the point of the pebble upstream is one of not dealing with, oh, look, we've got another bucket here at the bottom of the stream and yet another bucket at the bottom of the stream and yet another bucket at the bottom of the stream. And let's talk about all these buckets of water that we have. We haven't looked to see what is impacting these buckets of water further upstream. Let's not talk about the buckets of water at the bottom, but let's go up into a proto vision of what it is that's happening rather than um, keep observing the same things over and over again down at the, at the bottom of the stream. And so my caution would be, are we just collecting more buckets of water in a more precise way, in a nicer way, in a more accurate way? Is it really going to change our habit of just saying, look at the bucket I've got? Is it really going to actually influence our ability to look upstream? Or are we simply actually creating a tool to reinforce the fact that we want to keep talking about these buckets of water? And that, that that's, that's actually doing more harm than good. Are we... Are we going to change our habits or are we actually going to reinforce our habits? And if it's only reinforcing our habits, does it really make a difference? Um, I don't know the answer to that question, but it feels to me like it's about looking upstream and starting to look at what's the influence of, of these things rather than the buckets of water. If we keep looking at the buckets, we're never really going to move away from the conversation. Thanks, Jose. Thanks, Ken, for making me do that. Making you. Okay. Um, 
we're gonna we're at time. Stuart has a poem to close us out. Uh, great conversation. Good to see you all, Stuart. Muted, Stuart. It's one of those poems. It's one of those poems. Uh, <laughs> it's called. Read my lips, poem. <laughs> it's called service. It's called service, and I think it it very much um, speaks to our 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 dialogue today. The reflective questions: um, What is your calling, and what legacy do you want to leave? what institutional constraints that impact your service need to be addressed. Service, arrived, shared many friends, purposeful meetings with noble ends, seekers, healers with common mission, honoring tradition, herald heralding transition, suffering alone on separate paths, learning what triggers personal wraths must be the change you seek substantial effort not for the meek doctors lawyers priests leading edge stand tall on values out on your ledge it's reeling spinning listen the yelp humanity needs your help those you serve impact many lives. They're hurting, searching, fed up with lies. Seek what's enduring, a calling to serve. Come with presence, perseverance, and verve. Seek to restore what's missing on earth. Remember you came to contribute worth. Time to rise up, create new story and vision. Act quickly with resolve and precision. Time to lead colleagues and friends, time to honor thoughtful ends, engaging with prayers and dreams, honoring service to higher things. See you all next week. Have a great week. Stay safe. <laughs>